This is FWHR. It is a number calculated by dividing the width of your face by its height. To find it, divide the distance between your left and right temple by the distance between your upper lip and your eyebrow. Some studies have suggested that a higher FWHR is often perceived as a marker of dominance. These findings have been observed in different contexts, including leadership, financial success among CEOs, and even athletic performance. It is also associated with things like adolescent testosterone, aggression, attractiveness to women, and cause of death by violence. Take the last correlation as an example. In a research paper from 2012, scientists went through a forensic data sample covering 523 male victims of homicide. They found that men with narrower faces were more likely to have died as a consequence of direct physical contact than men with wider faces. So that's one good reason to want a higher FWHR. On the other hand, this trait was also found to be predictive of aggression, exploitive behavior, cheating in relationships, and deception. All of which traits that are correlated to a dark personality triad, consisting of narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy, which, by the way, also seem to be very prevalent among CEOs. Hence, it also makes sense that top executives will have both dark traits triad and a higher face width to height ratio. If you want to test if you have a dark personality, we have a link for you below. We also have a link for you for a FWHR calculator to which you can upload a picture and find your own value. And this maybe should be a tool that we ought to use much more than we think. The existing research is already enough to raise some serious questions about our ability to make the right decisions and our inherent bias wired into our primitive brains. Do we really choose leadership according to its capabilities and what's good for our society, or do we choose them because they seem to have the aesthetic hallmarks of strength, health, and beauty that might bring to the table the opposite of what we wish for as a civilization. Testing a variation of that question came about June 24 from a research team headed by Valentina Paredes of the University de Chile. She and her team wanted to check how student evaluations are influenced by FWHR. Nowadays, most universities use student evaluations of teachers to assess their professors, and these evaluations are usually taken into account for promotion or hiring decisions. It is possible that this metric is suffering from inherent bias baked deep into our brains. To find out, Paredes went through the scores of more than 5,000 courses taught by 688 professors and their FWHR extracted from their pictures. The findings clearly showed that for male professors, a higher FWHR consistently led to higher and better evaluations across all kinds of measures. This by itself is already challenging since other successive professors need to work harder to reach the same level of their attractive co-workers if they even can. It seems they are less judged by professional standards and more by looks. But when it comes to female professors, an increase in FWHR resulted in significantly worse evaluation. The reductions were substantial across different measures of teaching evaluations. This finding indicates a strong gender bias, whereas the same element that benefited male professors was harmful to female professors. It also indicates that we have brain circuits that influence our decision-making in a way that twists reality. Paredes also controlled for FWHR and found that if it had no effect on student evaluations of teaching scores, the likelihood of female professor receiving the highest evaluations among all teachers in giving term would increase by 13%. And this applies not only to the education sector, but basically to every sector where employees evaluate a co-worker. It is not only a gender bias, 
but also an evolutionary one that seems in general to prefer putting the power in the hands of people who are not always the best for doing the job. So now have a look around you. Are you evaluating, choosing or looking up to people around you for the wrong reasons? Can we really trust ourselves as humans to make the right decision for the right people showing us the right way forward? Or do we need to design new systems to make the right choices? Thank you for joining us for this face exploration journey. Please like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, reconsider the faces around you.